Well, hi, Tom. Hey, JC. How's it going, buddy? We still don't have an opening for this we show. Don't. We're just going to jump right We're going to dive right in. Right in the deep ha- end. We don't have little skits. We don't have a little soundbite type thing. We don't have a catchphrase yet. Well, when you start with a little skit, it's real cheesy. Everybody does it. I mean, it's not, you know, it's so cliche. Who does that? Just going straight for the cold open, maybe. Just start the show. We're here to talk about wrestling. This is Cheaters Never Pin. I'm JC, and that's Tom. Hey. That's how you start a show. That's how you start. Oh, See, show show started already. The the wheels are turning. People people are just thoroughly they're they're, they're thoroughly entertained. Well, all right, they're not necessarily entertained yet, but they're they're adjusting their volumes. They're they're figuring out. Okay, did I actually charge my Bluetooth speaker? Did it fall off the dashboard as I was driving? These are things that happen to me all the time. So <laughs> that sounds like I'm I'm assuming it happens to everyone else. <laughs> Well, yeah, my thing is and, and a lot of a lot of podcasts are here to get themselves that we're here to get the art of professional wrestling over. That's what we're here for. That that's we we are the Brad Armstrongs of the podcast wrestling podcast world. We will get the product over at the sake of ourselves. Damn straight. We're going to get the first thing we're going to get over tonight is that goddamn UK tournament. What a beauty, Tom. I've seen pictures of it. No, uh, I, I've i seen the important matches. Uh, I couldn't sit down and watch two days worth of stuff. Uh, so I, I did the cheating way. I went straight to the day two and just saw the main parts. And yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely a quality show. Um, and I mean, it's the way that, WWE has gone with, but now the cruiserweight tournament and now this UK tournament is they've they've shown themselves as being not necessarily afraid now that they have this vehicle in the network to put these to mainstream fans at least unknown wrestlers out there, give them a little bit of backstory and just let them do what they do best. They don't necessarily need to give them the goofy gimmicks and the soap opera plot lines and that type of thing they're just putting them out there and letting them do what has gotten them over in the independent promotions overseas that type of thing and it's refreshing to see yeah it was the tournament was masterful as you said night if you haven't watched it yet night two is the must watch i mean the the first night is fine it is solid wrestling it's quick matches um with the little quick sound bite here's who i am little things before each match that's re- that's really all the first night is there's nothing crazy there so if you if you've only got two hours and you really want to dive in and you want to see something from it watch that second night because holy hell that and, was some pro graps and it's it's a little bit better than say like the cruiserweight tournament was a little bit overwhelming to some people just because there were so many wrestlers involved and it went over so many different weeks. So you're sitting there and you're watching, you're waiting and you know, it's it's still the first round four weeks later, it's still the first round. So this, you can bang it out there. If you're, if you want to watch every single match, you can bang it out and you know, a few hours to watch round one and uh, day one and then watch day two and, you know, it, it, it doesn't take as much as your time. It's, you know, it's a pay-per-view length. Yeah. So if you were going to sit down and watch, like, you know, the Royal Rumble again for the 900th time, you can watch this in two parts. And it's broken up. So you watch the first day and then, you know, you go make yourself a pizza or something like that. And then you've got the second day. It, well, it you, It's you, a little bit easier to digest. You brought up a good point there to something that I hadn't realized, at least in my thought process until process until you said it out loud about the entire two days of this why i kept thinking man i love this more than the cwc and i think it's because of smaller field compressed time frame it didn't feel as as dragged out not to say i didn't i i I don't love the cruiserweight classic i think that's a brilliant format for something on on that scale that they want to do um but i think going forward this is a, a a brighter decision for them for the network to create two days of content, pack, uh, 
two nights somewhere in the world with with some theme to get something started. I think this is great. If you do one big tournament the size of the Cruiserweight Classic every year, whether it's Cruiserweights or maybe if that's whatever the, the women's tournament that uh, Paul uh, confirmed is going to happen this week. Uh, one big one, a couple of these really compressed ones every year. I think that way you get a good variety. But I I adored the length of this. It was it was uh, one hour longer than an episode of Raw. Let's put that let's put that into perspective. Yeah, there you go. And I, I think what I mean the cruiserweight tournament was the first time they've really done something like this, whether it be on the network or not. You know, it's this it was a huge encompassing tournament going across the various indies and overseas and that type of thing to bring in all these people and to get some of them signed and some of them weren't signed and to, you know, to kind of try to hide that as much as possible from the quote unquote smart fans, because the, the logic is that you're not going to have an unsigned person go over. And that was kind of the difference with this UK tournament knowing say in the cruiserweight tournament that people were looking at, especially when they were getting to the later rounds and they're seeing a guy like Zack Sabre Jr. And they're going, well, Zach isn't signed. So I know he's not going to win. When you turn around, you could look at the UK tournament. All these guys were signed, whether, you know, what kind of contract necessarily is, you know, whatever, but still all these guys were signed by WWE to at least some kind of contract so that, you didn't really know going in that you didn't take a list of like, oh, out of these 16 people that are competing, cross off about 10 of them right now. Right. It, it And they they I think they learned from that. They, they, they're going to be learning each time they do one of these tournaments. And as we see now that there's going to be a women's tournament coming up, we're seeing that there's there's a lot of room for content on the network. They've got they've got you know, room for anything, really. They they could just, they still have entire tape libraries that they could be putting out there that they just haven't yet for whatever reason. So they have the room to be able, they don't have to worry about trying to squeeze this in on a TV time somewhere. They have their own TV time because they have their own network. And whether it be putting it out there live or, say if they want to do the cruiserweight tournament next year where they take the first round and they have these things at like a progress, you know, a, ra- a, a qualifying match at a progress show and upload that and have that available without having to put that as a specific show. They have that ability now. So it's there. The network gives them a lot of options and we're just starting to crack the surface here. Absolutely. So kind of drilling into the tournament, you said you've only seen night two. What what highlights did you kind of glean from that? Um, I mean, it's it's just a different style uh, of when um, before we um, uh, before we actually watched the New Japan, I came to watch uh, the um, the January Fourth show with you we ended up watching that um, progress show we did. and um, that was my first experience of progress. Uh, I mean, read about it, that type of thing and kind of knew who guys were, but, and it is, I mean, UK wrestling is a different style and it's not, you know, it's, it's different. It's, but n- without going too completely off the page it's 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 a good mixture because uk wrestling say 10 15 years ago was watching paint dry it was the most horrifyingly boring i mean steve regal or william regal whatever you want to call him was like the most fascinating by far out of that group but i mean it it's and it's changed so much since then uh, you've still got this catch as catch can style, but you've also got the high flying and the the cruiserweight type action there, and it's just a complete mix of everything. And it's 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 this hybrid style now that isn't quite Japanese, isn't quite American, and it's it's just interesting in general. And it's just kind of fun to watch something new, at least for an American viewer 
to be able to watch. Yeah, there's and there's so much talent over there right now. And I, this tournament barely kind of scratched the surface. And I think part of that to do with what they could get to be available for them with World of Sports starting up. And uh, I think I think OTTs, uh, which is over the top, which is in Ireland, uh, is part of Flow Slam now. So kind of uh, dialing in to what they would be able to have as, as talent that they would uh, be able to own as much as they could. Um, that, this is a that, really great assortment of that. Uh, progress kind of when I started watching that back last summer with the super strong style 16, which is their kind of annual tournament. Uh, it hooked me hard and it made me go way deep down the UK rabbit hole to watching them and ICW and uh, WCPW, which has started up and is if, if you watched it at first and it wasn't great, that is true. Give it a watch again. It's gotten much better. All their episodes are on YouTube. That's the the promotion that What Culture is running now. Um, it has a lot of now, talent. Now, the Irish promotion, do all the wrestlers say fella? No, they don't. It's crazy. They're, oh. they're, Titan Tron is also not just pictures of Ireland. Uh, do, do the women's wrestlers all make puns? No. They don't. Okay, then, then I'm completely lost. Okay. You have to give, give it a shot. I think, it's, like I said, I believe... I believe they they have a couple of events on Flow Sam as well. Not um, knocking puns at all. I love puns and I love Becky Lynch. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but to go back to the talent that was in this tournament, the the, the names I I knew the best going into this, uh, Tyler Bate, who is we bury the lead, who is the 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 new first longest reigning uh, WWE United Kingdom champion at 19 years old. Uh, holy hell, that kid is good. He's built like a fucking house. Uh, he's amazing. That's a quality mustache he has, too. Yes. That's that's why he's from Mustache Mountain. Um, he's amazing. Jordan Devlin stood out to me, and I think that's because I'm a giant Finn Balor mark anyway. And this kid is... No, get out. <laughs> and looks like him and... Uh, Devlin is everything I want Balor to be as a heel later on, but that's many years down the road when the merch sales maybe stop, but I'll keep that going myself. Um, I, the world finally got exposed to Trent Seven, uh, who I think was... Uh, I think there was enough hype around Pete Dunn to where people kind of knew what to expect from him. I think Trent Seven was the biggest surprise for most people in this tournament. Uh, just a hard-hitting, just classic he had with uh was it the match with wolfgang no it was the match with him and uh yeah it would have been wolfgang i loved that match i know i don't think Meltzer gave it much but i don't really give a shit about Meltzer's ratings anyway it's a, it's a subjective art form uh wolfgang who's fine uh mark andrews finally escaping the bond the the freaking bonds of tna to actually be on a stage where he's considered actually good and not just used as a gimmick and called mandrews <laughs> yuck uh Sam, and then the the one person who stood out to me that i didn't know before oh well, i said devlin already but uh the sam gradwell guy who ended up facing dunn in the second round that kid's real good yeah, I mean, th there's there's a lot of talent there, and again, this is this is going to be the first exposure a lot of WWE fans are going to have of all these guys, really. Yeah. I mean, because you, you kind of have to go out. It, it, it's it's not impossible, but it's it's let's just say inconvenient to see UK promotions. I mean, it's you know, or New Japan World and things like that. Having to subscribe to all these other things to be able to see stuff and unless you're searching out particular matches on YouTube while it's still available or go over to uh Vimeo or any other YouTube alternative where they're not so create you know hardcore about um copyrights and all that type of thing. But um I, th I think the goal, at least for this tournament, for WWE, was to at least put on a showcase for these guys and to have them show what they can do and to have to to get the interest, to get the buzz going, to again, as as the rumor is now, to get 
possible interest in getting progress 